thank you for joining us. I appreciate you making the time to ask a few questions about video interviewing. It's great to be here with you, John, virtually. Um, our clients, um, especially for our uh, senior most recruitments, are um, worried about making a senior level hiring decision without actually meeting the person. And um, you know, in, in asking different clients and colleagues, can you actually do this? The answer is, gosh, I may have to, but I really don't want to. What are you giving up by not actually being in the same room as a person? And what are some of the things you can do to, to ensure that you're getting enough information to make these, these key decisions? None of us would have chosen to conduct uh, most, if not all, interviews virtually if we hadn't been forced to by the pandemic. Uh, but we have to adapt. And I think that there's a kind of natural bias that uh, probably lingers for a while against using these virtual technologies as the kind of assumption that, it, that they're inferior to in-person interviews. My own view is that while they are qualitatively different, and we can talk about some of those differences, uh, I wouldn't say that they're worse. And I think one of the important things to keep in mind today, too, is that this is going to be part of the future, that the ability for leaders to lead in a virtual environment, even though none of us knows exactly what the, the future is going to look like, is going to be an important thing to evaluate that I suspect none of us really thought that much about beforehand. What's your view on a, on a couple of tips that you would uh, tell our clients on how they can uh, make up for some of the signals and information that they're not getting by being in the same room? Sure. Well, one of the things that, that we're trying to, doing, trying to do by working virtually is to uh, approximate imperfectly as it is, some of the conditions that establish an early rapport and trust with whoever we're talking to virtually. And um, so one of the things that I would suggest is uh, asking the, the person that's being interviewed where they are geographically, try to locate them. It helps the mind situate them by figuring out where they are, both city and state kind of information, but also are they at home or are they in an office somewhere? That helps. And I think it's also useful to ask them something briefly about their experience of the pandemic and what it's been like for them to convert to working virtually. That can set a tone and it also sets the stage for using these virtual technologies to explore these, this new set of skills that are gonna be so important to assess. So if a client says to me, I cannot hire a new CEO with actually meeting them, is that a, um surmountable concern? Is it a legitimate concern? It's a legitimate concern to be addressed, but I think it is surmountable. I think that um, even if we can interview somebody in person, uh, partly during the, uh, the interview process, I, I think that I would still want to interview them virtually because it's going to be such an important skill set to assess. Um, I also think that that bias against uh, working virtually is kind of like the bias that used to exist when people say that um, don't use email so much because you can't uh, convey or judge tone in an email. And I actually don't buy that. I think that tone can be conveyed for better or worse in emails. And I think tone and character and demeanor presence can be conveyed work, uh, in a virtual interview as well. In our conversations with uh, colleagues and, and uh, some of our clients, um, they have said um, there are ways to gather information uh, about the person to augment what you would normally get uh, in a comprehensive interview. Uh, additional referencing, uh, ensuring that the line of inquiry that you're, you're giving them is, is focused on the key selection criteria, all those types of things. That requires another level of, of discipline. Um, but what would you say to a, a client who says, I really need to judge the person by seeing them. I need to feel their presence to see if they've got charisma. Um, how do you get around that? And is that a legitimate question and concern? It's a totally legitimate question and concern. And I certainly wouldn't dismiss a, a client who, who said that. And if it's possible to, to have an in-person meeting, I would certainly encourage that. But obviously, that's a, not a simple matter as it used to be, something we used to take for granted. Um, I think that there are other ways to, to gauge it. Um, one is in addition to the one-on-one uh, -on -one traditional interview format in which you have this strange mix of distance and intimacy at the same time, the distance of course being the fact that it's a technologically mediated 
conversation and you're staring at a screen as opposed to the person, but you're also peering into their uh, living room or their study or where they, wherever they happen to be sitting. And so we should take all of that as data and how they navigate that new strange kind of interaction is also data. The other thing I would also recommend is I would, I think that I would uh, add more group interviews to the mix in addition to the one-on-one -on -one interviews. Uh, one is not a substitute for the other. I think both are important. And uh, assessing how a leader uh, works with a group, again, virtually, is another window into their character. It's another window into their leadership skills. And it's an essential skill for any kind of uh, leader. Well, certainly going forward, uh, being able to do this to your constituents, whether it's your, your board of directors uh, or your team, um, being able to do it well and effectively is, is, is key. Absolutely. Well, Kerry, th thank you. Uh, we appreciate your insight. Uh, you're the incoming president of the America, American Psychoanalytic Association. So uh, I'm sure your constituents are uh, wondering how they're going to diagnose and assist people um, virtually as well. So we appreciate you, you sharing your thoughts. It's great to be here with you. Thank you.